have been uh, more than uh, uh, resolved in the last couple of years as additional hardware and equipment has been put on those fans by the manufacturer. In terms of filters, the only thing that effectively comes out of the, out of the mine is, is air, is methane at very, very low levels. It must be kept at very low levels for the safety of the people that work in the mine. So at very low levels, and that's exhausted to atmosphere. It's not a particulate, it's, it's a gas, the same as, um, as carbon dioxide, which is also exhausted from the mine. Those levels, are, those levels of gases are at, uh, at or around 1%, and at those levels are uh, effectively harmless. Harmless to miners underground over many, many years, and harmless to people as they're exhausted into the atmosphere on the surface to the, uh, to the local community. In terms of filters, we don't have any filters because there is no need for filters on those exhausts. The particulate levels are at extremely low levels and more than meet any requirement that uh, is imposed on, on us uh, by the appropriate legislation or by the EPA. Next question on here is what is the level of noise which is generated within the building housing the operations and what is it directly outside the building? 100 metres from the building and 500 metres from the building during normal operation and how many hours per day will the noise be generated? The proposed fan for the, proposed fan for the inner street site has not yet been designed. Suffice to say that it will be, uh, it will be the latest in, uh, in our knowledge and understanding of fans and I'm certainly not a fan expert. I'll leave the design and construction of those to the, to the engineers that will design and build those. But it's certainly my considerations of what the impacts of that fan operation might be. Certainly within the, within the building that may well house the fans in the years to come, the noise inside that building is quite large. That's why the building is built to insulate the surrounding uh, community environment from the noise inside compared to the noise outside. The noise levels outside, immediately outside the building, uh, my expectation is that they would be uh, extremely low and at distance from the fan virtually inaudible, if audible at all. So certainly noise, um, no surprise to everyone here, is, is a major consideration with the ventilation fan, something that's well and truly on our uh, on our uh, list of issues that needs to be managed extremely well. And uh, as I said, that design has yet to be completed. In fact, it hasn't yet started, but certainly we will need to, uh, to focus on that during the design and during the construction and ultimately during the operation of that fan in the years to come, should it be located on the inner street side. I might add that if the fan, uh, if, we, uh, if we don't ultimately locate the fan and shaft on the inner street side, we will be locating it on the Bridge Street side for where we currently have consent. So uh, the inner street side, we're viewing that as an alternative to the Bridge Street side, but uh, should, uh, should it not progress uh, for whatever reason, then we will be commencing construction on the Bridge Street side. And already we have put um, uh, a number of steps in place under the original consent to commence the preparation work for that Bridge Street site should it uh, ultimately go ahead. Next question is, how does Extrata intend to compensate my family if our health suffers, the stress of hearing and seeing the operations or fearing the effects of exhaust fumes? A couple of things. The key thing for us, the key thing for anyone with any sort of development is to ensure that uh, those impacts don't occur in the first place. So uh, we will be spending an inordinate level of time, certainly money, and effort over the, uh, over the coming months and years during um, the application phase and should it be approved during construction and operation to make sure that there, there are no impacts that give people the need for or result in those concerns. One question that, uh, one issue that I will uh, touch on briefly that was raised during um, uh, David's comments earlier, uh, Tarmel Colliery provide at no cost to anyone other than the colliery counselling, assistance and support services for the sorts of issues that David raised earlier. They're provided independently from us. The only thing we do is pay the bill. So if anyone has any concerns or issues or, or needs some support in that area, that's fully funded by uh, Tama Colliery Strata Coal and conducted by organisations uh, separate to us. Uh, if you choose to, uh, to go to, uh, to someone separate uh, to that, uh, we're quite happy to, uh, to pick up the cost of that. So certainly we do provide those support facilities if people have any concerns that they wish to wish to be uh, assisted with. 
moving back to number four shaft. How can I be sure that the water I collect and drink from my roof is free of toxins exhausted from the mine shaft? Effectively, from the mine shaft, we only have those gases. The only, only thing of any significance coming out from the shaft is, is the air that ventilates the mine. It's the very low levels of uh, methane gas for which we have the ventilation to keep the mine safe. And the carbon dioxide that also comes out uh, from the mine itself as a result of the mining operations. There's extremely low levels of, of anything else in there. We've measured them and we've complied with every requirement in terms of um, minimum levels of, of dust. And the only other thing of any consequence we've ever seen is, is um, occasionally very, very low levels of, um, of dust in the, in the exhaust that certainly meet requirements of, uh, of the approval and the state government. In terms of engineering, uh, if, Sandra, if I'm taking too long, let me know, but if you'd like me to go through these. Okay. Okay, well, there's, without taking a lot of time, I know health was a particular issue and was raised here, there's a number of questions here that relate to engineering, future expansion, the approval process, many of those have been answered. Consultation and engagement, I think I've touched on that. Lifestyle, the environment and the like. All of these well, I'll be taking on board, taking through to our consultants and contractors that are putting our environmental and community studies together and ensure that every single issue in here is addressed and appropriate responses to those concerns are included in our environmental impact statement and development application when it's ultimately lodged in, uh, in the months to come. I might just uh, take this uh, opportunity to conclude now. I've got no doubt there'll be some further questions a little later. Thank you, Sandra. Um, just a, a quick issue there. Um, I was under the understanding that this proposal was by the third quarter of this year that you wanted it approved um, to start work on it, not years down the track. Ideally, we would like it to, to receive approval so that it can be constructed and operated in time. That's our, that's our intention. Um, at the end of the day, we'll just have to see how long the approval process takes because there's a number of steps in that process. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Um, also, just, to, just, just before, uh, also, we were also told at that community meeting that we had that the, um, how are they going to dispose of the, the earthworks that comes out from the miners that are building the shaft and that was to be uh, done in a slurry and done into settling ponds which on none of those plans there's any settling ponds but now I believe that they're going to um, use the, the, the soil on the site so they're going to make mounds up there with the soil for on site for filling back the shaft later. Which way? Both of those are correct. The shaft, the shaft technologies that are used today uh, are a very um, sophisticated, large bore diameter drilling machine. So it drills a hole, ultimately the, sh the shaft diameter of three, four, five metres diameter, runs at a very slow rate and slowly bores its way down from the surface down to the ground level. That's replaced probably the more traditional means of shaft sinking, which was by the use of explosives that was done up until fairly recent times. Now these technologies are, are new and I've visited shafts that have been sunk this way, in, or certainly one shaft, in the last 12 months and uh, there's no doubt there'll be many more sunk this way in the future. Uh, it means there are no explosives. The material comes up from the, uh, from the shaft in two forms. One is uh, it's bored uh, completely underwater, so the, uh, there is fine material that comes up to ensure there's no dust from the drilling operation comes up. Uh, the, the fine material is stored on the surface in a dam, and the water is recycled and reused back in the drilling operation. But the bulk of the material comes up as rock. It comes up, probably the best way to describe it, about the size of railway ballast. The material is maintained on site. It will be used to, uh, to form a, uh, a visual and a noise bund around the, uh, around the shaft and fan at the uh, end of construction. And once the shaft uh, and fan is no, no longer required for the mine, all that material will go, it will be on site, it will go back down into the hole and will seal the shaft up for, uh, for eternity. Thank you. So you're saying there's no settlement ponds? Yes, there are settlement ponds on the site. That's what contains the very fine material, it's the, uh, like sand. That material is dropped out in the ponds. The water is recycled, as I said, and put back down to continue the operation. 
think. Not. You want to say anything about the report request? Thank you for but for organising the meeting and uh, thank you to Extrad for coming. But made my question. I did ask this the other the other night. Um, you have approval, as Christine Elderly said earlier, and I remember going through Tarmore North, and it still gives me a few pains in the back. David will remember that, and so many others here. But we went through a long process. It was a commission inquiry, a judge came here. You have approval for a shaft in an industrial area. What other reason apart from money do you want to put it next to a residential town like Thelmy? Yeah. <laughs> The location that uh, in the Bridge Street site was based on uh, how the uh, how the operators of the mine back almost 20 years ago thought the development of the mine would uh, proceed over the over the forthcoming 20 30 years. In that time, due to geological changes, due to uh, seam thickness changes, the mine plan has changed to what it was originally envisaged. So the location of the site in Bridge Street is not the best location as in in uh, respect to the mining operation. The location in Inner Street is, uh, is a better location in terms of how it uh, is located uh, to the mine operations. It certainly, as Michael says, does allow for more coal to be extracted. So yes, that does mean that there is, uh, is more, uh, more uh, cash recovered from the, from the operation as a result of that. And that is why the mine is there. The, the secondary issues that relate to that is that in the Bridge Street site, the fan shaft is located immediately beside the road. It will be well and truly visible to all and sundry uh, in that location, notwithstanding, notwithstanding our efforts to, to screen that and bun that area from uh, our nearby neighbours. The site in industry, we believe, will be uh, more obscure than that and less visible compared to the Bridge Street site. It also means that um, uh, as a result of the change in the mine plans, the mining will take place, uh, coal mining, long mining may well take place under the bridge on Bridge Street and that will result in the need to replace that bridge. So that bridge will be replaced on a new alignment and with a much better uh, um, access to that bridge from the road approaches on both sides. So there, that, that is also included in our application and we certainly uh, made that clear to people like council up front that that's something that we would also be prepared to include as part of our uh, modification. So there won't be less visible to all the houses in the street, will there? All the nursing homes. All the nursing homes. Just a question for you, Dan. Um, that Bridge Street site, it uh, had provisions for um, man access for the down in the mine shaft. Then one of the reasons is because you're 45 minutes from Tarmor for the workers to go to that down to that area, so that means about an hour and a half of lost production time. So if you're going to make this just a shaft at Inner Street and not at Bridge Street, and we're only talking one, not two, then how do you solve that problem of the productivity that you've already got? And that was one of the reasons that you went to Bridge Street. The answer to that question is that it's about swings and roundabouts. Not every site satisfies. Not every site satisfies every every issue for the mine. Uh, our, our view is that, uh, in, on balance, the location of the um, of the shaft and fan in industry uh, for just ventilation is the uh, the mining uh, flexibilities that, that gives them to the mine offsets. The extra costs that are involved in travelling all the way from Tarmore underground and not coming in at the at the Bridge Street site. Okay, now we'll take questions for the floor. So, if you uh, nominate uh, the woman in with the glasses. Sorry. to health, um, I guess the main concern um, for people is will time and money be invested by Xstrata? As Kate mentioned, um, although you stand here and say there will be no ill effects to health, 
these things are often not foreseen for many years to come. So will you be putting the time and resources into collecting a database um, of people's health at this point um, for comparison later on? Often it's too late down the track when people are having ill effects and you say, well, they were already pre-existing. So I think it's important um, for Extrata to take the responsibility to find out the health of the community as it stands before this shaft goes in. Here tonight, but I will take that on notice because it's something that I will have to refer to health professionals. Uh, certainly, an area that's beyond my uh, capacity and capability. Pastor Chorgan? Um, yeah. I've got a question for you. you. Like, you're speaking half the truth when you say the coal miners are breathing in all that beautiful fresh air. And that. <laughs> but, uh, that exhaust fan is to suck out the returns, which is filthy with gas, dust, and you omitted to tell them about when the roof fractures, the stench of that bloody shale oil that comes out and blends with the coal, which will run for the length of that wall, which would be 12 months, and that stench will carry on for that full 12 months until you progress till the next one. Why don't you tell the people what is exactly coming out of that flume which is going to be a humongous amount of gas. And don't say there's no gas, because no one can go in the returns. That's why they've got the returns there. Like, all you've got to do is suck out all the shit out of the returns and pump it onto our property. As far as I can see, I can't sit in my backyard, so you bloody will can't either. Those, for those comments. What, what I will undertake to do is when we, uh, when we have got in detail, and I don't have it here with me tonight, but I will, because this is very early in the consultation, this is more about issues and collection of people's uh, concerns than for us to provide answers. This is very early in the consultation and I'm sure you'd like us to, to get your concerns and, and issues on the table and considered before we started to give you uh, definitive answers. But yes, I. I I don't have that uh, to the third decimal place in front of me for those issues. I have spoken in general terms, and what you have commented in, in general terms is correct. There, there is dust in the mine, there are odours in the mine, uh, there certainly is methane. There certainly is, in, I'm talking in the mine, there certainly is methane gas and carbon dioxide in the mine. When that's uh, diluted significantly by large quantities of air, uh, our, our understanding, and certainly our aim, is to ensure that they, there is nothing of any concern that's exhausted from the shaft. And we will take you, we will take you through that in detail. When we've got all those details uh, in section and paragraph to meet your concerns, and also the government regulators such as the EPA and the Department of Planning. Thank you, Sam. Um, just hold on, gentlemen. Yes. <coughs> I used to be employed by the Joint Coal Board. Thankfully, I no longer am. <laughs> I'm a shareholder in Extrata, and I'm whether I will continue to be a shareholder in Extrata. I normally talk to meetings like this on the side of the developer, but I don't think I could at this meeting because I think the standards being asked the standards being asked for here are not high enough. You seem to be concerned about your jobs. What about the lives of your grandchildren? Yeah. Yeah. We ought to be worried about the environment and sustainability. Yeah. Not just how the fan can be. It's easy to make the fan hot. Uh, like putting more attenuators in. But what are you going to do with the methane? 300 cubic metres per second of exhaust gas coming out, you said earlier tonight. Um, that corresponds at 1% methane concentration to 5 tonnes per hour. Now, you, 
if you design the mind sensibly, you can learn that and generate electric, electric energy. But whatever you rely on complying with state government limits, it's too easy. Why not hold your hands up and say, look, we're, we're good people, we're miners, we're trying to do something sustainably and we'll spend some of our profits on doing it properly. This is what I ask. One thing I will add uh, to that comment regarding the utilisation of the methane. Tumor drains a substantial amount of gas from the mine to enable it to mine and to make the mine safe for, uh, for miners underground. That gas is utilised on the surface. There's a power station on site at uh, Tumor Colliery. Many people may not be aware, but there's a power station on site there. Generates up to 10 megawatts of electricity. Depends on the quality and the quantity of gas available to it at the time. So all the gas that we drain from the mine, uh, provided it's uh, of suitable quality to enable those, uh, those generators to run, can, uh, can generate electric power, which is fed straight back into the local grid here, about 10 megawatts capacity from the power station. We're very proud of that, because for that 10 megawatts that's generated there, that's 10 megawatts that doesn't have to be generated by other means. So we do focus um, closely on our sustainability. We do try wherever we can to be responsible in terms of our uh, operation. The lady in the black top. Oh, I'm just wondering when the water's going to get back into Bellmere Lakes. <laughs> no, Ian, Ian said he can't answer that one. The gentleman with, with his hand up in the back. Uh, Nick, well, what